Hello besties! Today we will be doing another tutorial, we'll be doing the pinwheel. But before that, make sure you join our crafting community on Facebook, Misfit Makers, and make sure to check out our website, misfit-makers.com. Okay guys, let's get started. I will be using a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia, and I will be using these shape tape from Colorflex. And this design is from Brave Danger Designs. And we will make sure to post that in our supply list in the comments and also in our Patreon group. So anyway, if I've already cut out the template and make sure you cut it out in the right settings. My, my machine is a Cricut and I cut it in the washi settings with less pressure and it gives the perfect cut every time. And let me tell you guys, well, I'll tell you guys in a second because I'm missing part of this tutorial here. But as you see here, I just folded over a little itty bitty tab, just enough to expose some stickiness from the sheet, from the template. So I'm gonna cut out this little tab and then I'm gonna kind of flatten it out. And then we're gonna start lining it up. I promise you guys, this is the hardest part of the whole design. After you get this, it is, gravy and it's not even that hard um okay just just follow my lead i've done this lots of times and this is the best way that it works for me i can't put it on just nilly willy i have to do it this way or else it'll be crooked 99 percent of the time so anyway what i was saying before about this um, sticky sheet which is a double-sided sheet where you can cut out templates and you can stick your glitter right to it but anyway, I've tried so many, and when I mean so many, like at least five or six brands. And this one, guys, mm, top notch, the best. And the best part is that the glitter does not cling onto the surface because the white part is like, car like cardstock, so it's thick, so it's really good to work with. It's not flimsy like most other ones. But anyway, that's just my little plug there. I love the shape tape from Colorflex, so go check it out. Okay, so once you get it nice and lined up as I've been doing here while I've been yapping away, um, I wanna go ahead and stick that little tab that I exposed, and then I'm gonna roll back a little bit at a time. Remember guys, this is an adhesive sheet. Think of like vinyl. You wanna go slow and steady and firmly because you can get bubbles, but if you do get a bubble here and there, it's okay, we can pop it later, so don't freak out or anything. We can definitely fix it. But as you see here, I'm just taking my time, I'm using my fingers just to kind of smooth out any bubbles, and then I remembered, oh, my furry squeegee. I love my furry squeegee, or felt squeegee, or whatever you wanna call it, but I call it my furry squeegee. I love this thing. I love it to apply vinyl and obviously I love it to apply this double-sided adhesive sheet. So again, as you see here, I'm just taking my time. Oh, see, so you see that bubble right there? Mm, that bubble's going to get popped later. I'll try to point it out in the tutorial so you see how I pop it. But anyway, you want to get all the way through. Make sure that everything is adhered really, really good. Oh, there we go. I used my pin pen, made a little little teeny hole and then popped it okay guys so I'm gonna be using foils and glitter Ermagerd by peachy olive is one of my favorite opal whites it would probably work better if you cut out your vi your not vinyl foil in sections but I just grabbed a whole sheet the whole shebang so anyway I peeled off the little piece that I wanted to adhere my foil and then I used my furry squeegee to kind of squeegee it on there as you are going to see in the tutorial I kind of struggled a little bit I, like it wasn't sticking all the way but then I put my finger and I was like it's still sticky maybe it's my foil so anyway I went back with my foil and I just kind of like patched it up and I was like mm, I kind like this look kind of looks like a holographic watercolor look so I was like mm, I'm gonna roll with it because I was about to trash it I was like mm, this idea did not work like I wanted to but look at this guys love it it works super easy super fast this is sped up obviously because you don't want to watch me take a bazillion years doing this how but however it did not take long at all like at all 
So anyway, as I go around, I take every other piece out, every little piece out. It just peels off. I love using my pin pen for that. If you do not have a pin pen, you can always use like a little sharp X-Acto knife or even use your nail. It's very easy to peel up. So I'm just gonna go around my cup one section at a time, as you see here with foil. Let anything adhere to it when I first place it and then patch it up with my foil pieces. As you can see here, I'm patching it up where it didn't adhere, but it's still sticky. So I don't know, maybe my foil sat in the heat too long or was I was just having issues or it just wanted to do its thing, which I'm kind of glad it did because I love the look. Okay, so here you see me kind of just finishing it off, have a couple more sections, and after this we're gonna do the glittering. There's so many options, so many combinations you can do. You can even use vinyl, as you guys saw Jessica in the tutorial that she did on live in the Patreon group, or you can use foils, or you can just alternate glitters. There's nothing telling you you have to uh, use anything else but glitter which glitter is amazing so mm. okay so I'm done with the last section kind of just checking it over making sure that there's no bald spots then we're gonna go with the glitter I recommend using a fine glitter it just adheres better if you do have like a different color glitter you can spray paint your cup ahead of time to kind of match it However, um, I feel like this shape tape works so good and the coverage is so, so good that you can do it over a white base. So that's just me, but since I am using white, my cup was already white, so it worked out perfectly. So I took off one section at a time. You really can take off the whole thing if you want, if you just want to go for it, but I just like working in sections, especially since I have a bazillion interruptions you know mom life so I don't want to just leave it exposed so I took one section at a time and then brushed off any excess that was on my foils and here I am just working 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 now after you are done with the glittering process you absolutely can seal it you can seal it with a spray sealer you can spray it um, with like the Mod Podge sealer that people like um, I actually used some Mod Podge to seal my sections of glitter. I just grabbed a brush and slowly made my way around. That's just the, the route I took, probably because it was like two o'clock in the morning and I didn't want to go outside and spray paint stuff. And you know that I live in the prairie now, so it's super windy here. And I was like, mm, forget that. Anyway, did it, it went on a ramp, but I used um, Mod Podge to seal my glitter sections. I did not seal my foil. However, with the shape tape, it is not it's not a requirement to seal your glitter because it sticks so well and anything that's not adhering to it will just fluff off. So really you don't have to seal it. I think I just did it out of like, like on autopilot, you know, like mm, I have to seal it, but really, mm, you really don't have to. Okay, so moving on to the booty, the butt of the cup. I am using Colorflex's glitter glue to adhere my glitter. It is a basically a glitter glue to glue on your glitter. So I am going to give it a light coat, just like you would do Mod Podge or any other adhesive, sprinkle my glitter, and then I'm going to do the sides. I love doing this. I love putting the glue on my hand for these little spots here and then just kind of uh, going around like that. Um, I am going to epoxy it now. So let's get ready to epoxy. Make sure you clean off all your spaces. And here we are. I mixed about, I guess, maybe 30 mLs of Facet from CCDIY. You guys already know Facet is life. I love that it dries in 20, uh, not 20, sorry, not 20 hours. I love that it dries in less than two hours and it is ready to go after that first coat because it is so thick that it covers the glitter so well. So I put a coat of epoxy and then I torched it really, really, really good. If you use like a chunkier glitter, you're not able to get a smooth 
finish after your first coat of glitter, you absolutely can put two coats before you go in with your line, pinstripe lining. But like I said, CC DIY facet, she's thick. She's thicker than a snicker. And so I only needed one coat. And so make sure that you torch your cup. You want to pop any bubbles that is that is that is on the cup that are on the cup. Anyway. So after it cures, you wanna sand it really good, knock off all those chunks of glitter, any bubbles that might have you might have missed, make sure you get your rim really good, and then clean it off with some H2O. Now for the most tedious part. So pop in some music or uh, your favorite podcast. I think I was like listening to Crime Junkies while I was doing this because I was like tired and I was like, I need something to pass the time. So anyway, my pinstripes, I cut myself just at a regular 651 vinyl. They are measured at 0 0.07. That's usually my go-to. You uh, Sometimes I go 0 0.05. It just depends what you want to do. And depending how wonky your lines are. If your lines are a little wonky, then you might want to go a little thicker. If they're nice and crisp, then go a little thinner. So as you see here, I started off by lining the bottom and the top. Key, key thing here. You want to make sure your X-Acto blade is super, super sharp. That way you're not sawing through vinyl strips like I'm doing here. After I did this this little triangle, I was like, mm, it needs a new X-Acto blade. I legit change my X-Acto blade probably once a week because I don't like working with a dull blade. So anyway, I am just going to go around the cup one triangle, one triangle section at a time. This is, like I said, it's not hard, it's just tedious. It's just so tedious, it takes a long time. And honestly, it can really stand on its own without the pinstriping. The lines look pretty crisp. I almost considered not pinstriping it, but you guys already know, pinstriping just makes everything look so sharp and put together. So after you get into your groove, I promise it goes way faster than you think. So. Anyway, here I am, fast forward to my last triangle because ain't nobody wanna watch me lay a bunch of lines on this cup. So take your time and once it's nice and done, if you use like holographic or any metallic vinyl to do your pinstripes, make sure you seal it with quick coat. Because I use 651 vinyl, just regular, vinyl I didn't have to seal it I went ahead and epoxy this one more time before applying my decal now that she's nice and cured I'm gonna apply my decal this decal is a clear white cast decal from create by firefly it's a sad sensitive but savage I almost said savage and sensitive but either way I thought the colors looked really good with the colors on the cup and I'm just going to place it right in the center right here kind of um, where all the pinwheel spokes meet and just line it up and look how cool it is this is amazing because it is a clear sticker you, all the little lines the edges will disappear after you epoxy it and it will look perfect after this we're gonna epoxy it one more time make sure you take the time to kind of push out any bubbles or any creases because all those will show after you epoxy it but after that it's ready to epoxy after you epoxy and it's nice and cured, look at this cutie. I am obsessed. I can't wait to try other combinations, but this one hit the spot. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Make sure to tag us if you were inspired by us. Make sure to check out our group and our Patreon. Thank you so much to our Patreon members. And also subscribe and follow to our Facebook, our Patreon, and our YouTube. See you guys later. Bye.